Yeah, hello, welcome to the um, Docs IEDIN project update session here in Berlin, Germany. Um, some few words about uh, that summit here. It's uh, good to be here. It took uh, at least three years from the proposal of the summit for the venue here in Berlin to the realization uh, 2018. Uh, we had a uh, one-year planning phase with, to make the summit to a very unique event. We had a hackathon last weekend to bring the people together and have some fun with hacking. <laughs> uh, we had a pub crawl last night, which uh, you have hopefully uh, enjoyed. Um, so uh, it's good to be here all with you um, 29 years after the fall of the wall. Uh, without that, it uh, wouldn't be possible that we all stay here together in the um, city cube. So please, uh, please pay attention uh, for the poster exhibition in the lunchroom on level one, which we have already prepared um, as the team for you, and where you can see uh, what happened uh, since 1961 in Berlin. So now. Uh, uh, switch over to the uh, I-18N uh, project um, update session, what had happened in the last release. So a short agenda, um, introduction of the I-18 team, some facts about Rocky, um, introduction of the project the trans translation, um, some news about the translation check site, uh, the goals for the Stein release, and uh, what happened um, in Steins in the first weeks. I'm uh, Frank Löcker, Technology Manager Cloud Applications at Deutsche Telekom. I'm the project team lead uh, in the i 18 team, also the team member of the um, German translation team. Also, I worked as a DOCS core member in the documentation team, participant in, in different working groups and special user groups. I'm also the founder of the Cloud Kindergarten in the past. Um, some explanations about um, the work of our team. We have a mission statement. The mission statement is to make um, OpenStack accessible to people of all um, language backgrounds. We heard us in the session before from the colleagues from Kola. They translated um, documentation stuff from Chinese to English and in the other round. And um, that's also what we make in our team, not only for the software, also for documentation. Or we had also things in the last cycle with uh, some white, white paper translation, um, like um, edge computing white paper or the container white paper. Uh, some facts in Rocky. Uh, we experienced uh, or, or counted um, some fewer numbers in the um, different um, KPIs. Um, 64 modules were touched in that release. Uh, to compare to the Queen's release, a uh, minus of 27 percent. We supporting uh, 14 languages in Rocky, and we have uh, in Rocky. 38 active translators. There are also a um, big cluster of um, translators, but there are almost 38 people there. And we work with the uh, support of uh, seven companies. Just to mention again the I-18 guide, which we have, if you want to, if you want to start, uh, it's a good point to go in there. It's on docs.openstack.org uh, um, uh, slash I-18. Um, some highlights um, there, how to start for contributing as a translator in OpenStack. Um, it's explained how to join a language team, how to handle translation bugs, and explanation of our toolings and um, our infrastructure. There's also a PDL guide uh, since the last cycle inside. If you're interested to be the next PDL, then you have to go to this guide. Um, yeah, what we do about the releases is also explained there. And this guide is also translatable and available in six languages. 
Um, the main thing from the last cycle, also in this one, is the um, project doc translation. Maybe as you heard that um, document, the documentation for the project is moved out from the central place um, more in the project repos. And so we start with an early bird uh, with three projects uh, to translate um, the documentation of the um, OpenStack Ansible um, project of the OpenStack Helm and um, documentation of the horizon. We had um, good progress in all main languages um, in the different books like the user guide or the admin guide and the developer guide. And yeah, that's a little bit outdated work on build and publishing jobs because it's um, since few days um, already published. We see this in the next uh, one of the next slides. The next, um, our translation check site, we have a check site um, where you can see in this picture also the horizon dashboard that works uh, with uh, fetch of the um, translated swings from the different um, projects in uh, horizon uh, and build a horizon dashboard on the fly with a new translated um, words and then you can check uh, make the sense um, in this menu or in this tab um, if you choose uh, different words for different uh, phrases. We have an official uh, sponsorship of Deutsche Telekom for hosting um, this project, so it should be already available. And in this cycle, in last cycle, we had also some improvements and enhancements, so there are more modules inside, which is shown on the dashboard. And the last thing we start with, uh, let's encrypt um, support for the um, um, OpenStack Ansible project. So it's more like a cross project um, between different teams. Um, our goals for the Stein release continue with the um, project doc translation. We had, um, as you heard, three uh, early bird projects. Of course, there are much more, and uh, we have to decide or to priorize uh, which projects are um, the next in, um, next in. The next idea is also the storyboards translation. The storyboard, maybe you heard it also on the summit, it becomes more attention on different points. It's momentary uh, only available in English, and we. Um, want to start this also supporting this in different languages. And the last point also, we started this year some um, journeys to different open stack days uh, behind in, in, in Europe and to acquire new, new language team members so uh, that we spread this more and more languages, but also um, could, uh, could put more people in um, language team, for example, also here in German. Um, but I talked already the um, project doc translation. We have, for example, in German our own landing page. It's in docs uh, openstack.org slash de. There you can find, for example, the um, uh, project doc translation and then the OpenStack Ansible documentation. And there's the link that the slides will be shared later on the um, menu page. Another thing also uh, around the globe and the Korean translation, they had also a kind of meetup in Korea and translated with um, very many uh, contributors, a lot of things that is mentioned here, uh, 18,695 words were translated in a very short time. I think it was one or two days uh, for a um, meetup, and that's a very good progress. So, the last thing also um, mention of the project, the translation, and welcome in Berlin. Um, yeah, some um, summaries we are find we have our own mailing list um, for the IATIN team. 
If you have our own uh, IRC channel, uh, OpenStack uh, minus IEDN, and we have also an office hour weekly on Thursday at different times. If you have a question or interest, then can you join? So, and then I would hand over to Petter for the documentation team. Thank you, Frank. So, um, I am Petter Kovac. Uh, I work for Red Hat uh, in the documentation department. And in OpenStack land, I've been um, the documentation PTL since uh, uh, Queens. So, I joined the OpenStack community a little bit earlier than that in Mitaka, but uh, uh, you know, in recent years or cycles, it was mostly mostly uh, uh, leading uh, the the docs community. So. This is our mission statement. Uh, uh, back in Pike, uh, you know, we made the biggest change probably in the history of the documentation community in OpenStack. In that, uh, uh, since we, you know, unfortunately lost many people, 80% of the team, uh, we had to reorganize. We had to uh, refocus from actually writing content to uh, providing assistance to other parts of the community in writing content. So by assistance, I mean maintaining the documentation infrastructure, maintaining the documentation tooling, helping with the content organization, uh, maintaining guidelines, you know, style, style guide, glossaries, uh, resources like that. <coughs> but then again, we don't really have uh, uh, documentation writers on the team anymore, so it's mostly developers, it's mostly, you know, people interested in infrastructure. So uh, it is now uh, the role of individual project teams to uh, to develop uh, content, you know, to own their own content for their own project, basically. Uh, uh, the fact that we transfer the ownership of the uh, project documentation to project teams is uh, tied to the unified structure. I will talk about it in the next slide. But uh, this probably been the main uh, work you know, done in the last two cycles. Uh, uh, more recently, uh, one of the last uh, remaining pieces that we still had under, you know, uh, let's say uh, owned by our team was the operators documentation. There was a session earlier today uh, in the in the other building with uh, people interested in operation documentation. So they set up their own team uh, that may that uh, the the operators the community set up their own team that now owns the the, the operation guides. Uh, this is the high, high availability guide, architecture design guide, and the operations guide. Uh, so the work on those documents, you know, got restarted, and we hope to see some improvements there uh, with the, you know, more streamlined uh, workflow that will hopefully work better for the guides, you know, uh, for the guides and for the guys who are interested in working on them from the, you know, from the operators community. Uh, so this is the this is the unified structure that now uh, 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 project teams use. You know, so projects like Keystone Nova, they all have the documentation in the tree, uh, organized per uh, basic categories or groups, admin, uh, installation, uh, referential documentation, things like that. Uh, we also plan on uh, migrating uh, potentially you no know, API documentation, maybe release notes into the tree, so that every everything will be you know under under docs uh, slash something. Uh, uh, with the exception of the formal documents for operators that I already spoke about, which are. Uh, in their own repos now, or they are migrated to their own repos. We used to have, uh, or we still have, uh, a big documentation repository called OpenStack Menus when we used to host all the formal guides. 
but now uh, you know as we gradually move the content out to other places uh, that repo now serves more uh, as a, a place where we build the doc site uh, and where we host the configuration for uh, project guides. Uh, there are also uh, changes happening uh, in the documentation tools to change. So apart from the uh, minor improvements, you know, here and there, uh, uh, we also now accept patches from uh, projects in uh, strategic focus areas to for them to be able to reuse the documentation toolchain outside of OpenStack or outside of the official OpenStack documentation site. So if they, let's say, want to set up a third-party documentation site using uh, the, the Sphinx-based toolchain, you know, probably tweaking the team a little bit uh, with their own branding. Uh, it's all open source. It's all uh, released out there. Uh, but uh, we now, you know, made the decision to, to officially accept the, the, the third party changes to the, to the tooling, like for example, to the team package, OpenStack Docs team, so that the uh, uh, communities like uh, Starring X, uh, you know, can uh, quickly deploy the tweaks uh, without, you know, forking anything or maintaining some downstream patches. Uh, so, as I said, we are now a community of people who basically are more like gatekeepers, basically, you know, for the for the whole uh, OpenStack community. But we are still a, a single team, and you can still reach out uh, to us. Uh, uh, we are we have bugs on Launchpad, so if you see anything related to the doc site, uh, basic navigation that is not specific to the content of, of, uh, of an individual project, you can file a bug against OpenStack manuals, the old big repo that we still have. Uh, we have a, we don't have a, our own mailing list, so we use the uh, main OpenStack uh, developer mailing list for discussions. When we uh, want to discuss something documentation specific, we use the doc stack in subject line so that you know, people can quickly identify the topics related to general documentation uh, questions. And we do have our own IRC channel, uh, OpenStack doc on Freenode. Uh, so for a quick question about you know, Sphinx, or for a quick question about how to set up uh, project documentation for your project, uh, you know, how to do things, uh, now, uh, like formatting style questions, uh, it's probably best to just ping uh, the channel uh, than you know writing an email. People are usually there and uh, responsive. Uh, we have, uh, we, I talked about the guidelines. So the main guideline document will be the documentation contributor guide. There is a section. Uh, quick start section that can get you started, uh, you know, uh, it explains the basics of, of the documentation workflow that follows the, the code workflow. So we use Garrett, we use the same tools as when you, when you submit code patches. Uh, this uh, guidelines document also contains uh, the style uh, stuff and uh, other information uh, related to it. So that will be that will be it. Uh, uh, we have uh, uh, another session later today. Uh, it is the very last session of the summit. So <laughs> you surely want to come and join us at 5:10, right? Uh, I think on this floor it will be a documentation internalization onboarding session. So if you have a specific question, you know, if you wanna just but well, join the fun, you know, help with something. Uh, we are looking for, you know, for example, designers, people interested in, in site design, because we have many ideas how to improve the doc site, but we don't also, we don't always have the skill sets, right? So uh, anything related to documentation translations, you are more, more than welcome to come uh, join us at 5, 10 p.m. today. So with that, I would like to thank you, and if you have any questions or just lunch time.
Yeah. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Thank you.